You drop God for man, God will drop you. And when, in the foolishness of the Christian, he's bombarded with a lot of problems, then he starts to ask the stupid question, why has God deserted me? God, but I'm praying now. Eh, I've prayed and prayed and prayed, and you're not hearing me. What have I done now? Eh? God knows you. He knows what you will say. That's why Jeremiah 5 Verse 19 says, and it is God now telling Jeremiah about you. And it says, and when your people say, and when your people say, why has the Lord our God done all these things to us? You shall say to them. When your people say, why has the Lord our God done all these things to us? You shall say to them. As you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your land. As you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your land. So you shall serve strangers in a land that is not yours. That is the answer. When we have accidents. When our children run into trouble, when our wives run into trouble, or our husbands, we say something like that. Or other people say, oh, that thing should not happen to them. Why, that, why, why has it happened to them? It should not happen. And you yourself will say, but this thing, this thing should not happen to me. I fast and pray. I call upon God. What else? Why should God allow it? Take stock. Are you serving the true God? Or you are serving foreign God? Many of us who came from Africa on fire for the Lord in the Holy Spirit, many of us came to this country. We dropped the true God. We are serving the British God, the permissive God, The God that takes everything and compromises. You serve foreign God, you get into trouble. Get me right. I did not say white God. And I did not say black God. There's no white God. There's no black God. There's only God Almighty. But what I'm saying is that when people turn away from the true God and they now have an imagination of their heart representing the brand of God that's acceptable to them, then that is a foreign God. That's an idol created in people's minds. It is that idol created in people's minds that Europe is worshipping, that America is worshipping, that most other places are worshipping, that even many parts in Africa are worshipping. Only few people are worshipping the true God, the almighty God, the creator of the heaven and the earth. And you will find the worshippers of true God, not only in Christianity. I'm sure there are some Muslims worshipping the true God in the way they know. There are, some, there, are, there are some Jews worshipping the true God in the way they know. My Bible tells me Cornelius did not know Jesus when he was worshipping God. He was worshipping the true God. And God sent and appeared to Cornelius. That you are doing well, but you need to add Christ. Send for Peter. So there are other people in other faiths who are worshiping the true God, only they don't know Christ. And in due course, God will send people to lead them to Christ. 
why there are people in Christianity who have departed from the true God and are worshiping a shadow. And this period of Lent is for us to reassess which God are we serving? Is this still the true God or the convenient God that is acceptable to the whole world? The God that takes anything, even though those things are contrary to his word, takes this homosexuality thing. It is clear in the Bible. It's against God's word. But people have been forced. Many churches have accepted it. The Church of England is the, is the most guilty. What God are they serving? If you are serving a God that says, I don't want this, and you are forcing it on him, then something is wrong with you. This is not the Anglican church in which I was. And the Pentecostal churches are not different. There are some people even in the Pentecostal churches who are committing incest with their own children. What God are we serving? We have created an, an image structure of a different God from the one that our fathers served. That's why he says, stand by the roads and look and ask for the ancient paths. We are the good ways and walk in it and find rest for your souls. Let's search for the true God. Let's forget all the theories. Let's forget all the ideas that different people have put in books. Let's stick to the Bible. Let's stick to the Holy Spirit leading us to the throne of mercy. And look with pure heart. And listen with open ears to what he will say to us and to what he will show us. So God knows what he will ask. And he said quite clearly in that Jeremiah 5, 19, as you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your land, so you shall serve strangers in a land that is not yours. And that's not, that's not all God has to say about that. In the same chapter, look at verses 23 to 25. He says, but these people have a stubborn and rebellious heart. These people have a stubborn and rebellious heart. They have turned aside and gone away. They have turned aside from the way. They've gone away. They do not say in their hearts, let us fear the Lord our God. That's, that's, that is what is annoying God. There's no fear of God at all. Rather, there is a fear of man. At Christmas, don't put Merry Christmas on Christmas card. There's no fear of God. You are pretending to fear the Muslims. You are pretending to fear the Jews that they will feel uncomfortable. Don't mention Christ in the Christmas card. What good are you serving? The Red Cross that was, that was founded on the principles of Christianity has become money-grabbing institution. They don't care about Christ anymore. So why should you give them money? For what? 
a lot of people have made money from this tsunami crisis. Everywhere, all over the world, they are collecting money. And the money will never go anywhere. Is that the way Christ asks us to behave? Even some churches have raised funds for this tsunami thing, and the money had gone into the pocket of the pastors. Everybody is smart in the head. Is that the way Christ would have behaved? What would Christ have done if he had been on earth? God says, in verse 20, declare this in the house of Jacob. Proclaim it in Judah. If that were to be written today, it will have read, declare it in my churches, in the house of prayer. Declare what? Verse 21. Hear this, O foolish and senseless people. Hear this, O foolish and senseless people. Who have eyes but see not? Who have ears but hear not? Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Has it not been said that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and understanding? Who fears God these days? Nobody does. Everyone does what he likes. People fear policemen than God. People fear a witch than God. When a witch talks, people will say, hey, 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 please don't kill me. But when God talks, you say, get off. God is not happy at that. Do you, verse 22, do you not fear me, says the Lord? Do you not tremble before me? Verse 24, they do not say in their hearts, let us fear the Lord our God who gives the rain in his season, the autumn rain and the spring rain and keeps for us the weeks appointed for harvest. No. And yet, he will come up and say in verse 19, why has the Lord our God done all these things to us? And God gives you the answer in verse 26 now. Verses 25 and 26, he gives you another answer. Your iniquities, verse 25 says, your iniquities have torn this goodness away from you and your sins have kept good from you. If you have any sins, you will take what God is saying on board. Your iniquities have turned this away and your sins have kept good from you. For wicked men are found among my people. That's the point I was making at the beginning. Stop messing around that there are wicked people outside around you. No, God is saying, for wicked men are found among my people. They look like, fa like fowlers lying in wait. They set a trap. They catch men. It is within the house of God that the people of God are being destroyed by the agents of darkness that are locking in the midst like people of God. And not only that, God has another problem with the church. Verse 30. An appalling and horrible thing has happened in the land. What is the appalling and horrible thing? Verse 31. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule at their discretion, not at the prompting of God anymore. The priests rule, the pastors run the church, not based on the word of God, but on their plan, on their program, on their ambitious, ambitious projects. And what is more, my people love to have his soul. People don't care for honest churches anymore. When there is a church that will preach the solid word of God, 
you won't get a big congregation. They run away. People don't want that. But where there are lies and you entice them with money and with false prophets that God wants them to be rich, and you hammer that every Sunday, people will flock into it. You watch your, your, your TV. You watch your TV. Watch the, the various congregations that you, that you see there. Where you find a lot of people and they were shaking their heads and they were, hey, listen to what that pastor is preaching. It's about money. It's about how they will prosper. It's about how they will build houses. It's about how they will, they will get jobs. It's enticing to them. They want it so. As he speaks, you, you find some people getting up in, their, in, in, the, in the row and waving their hands. Ah, yes, pastor. And you see those light-headed young women there. They are happy. Ah, yeah. With their heads uncovered. Those who have been looking morose before, when they start hearing hear that you will get those back, they will, you will see them smiling and waving their hands. Ah, and some of them will start crying. For what? They are being led to hell. And yet they are not thinking. I would have thought that anybody who goes to a church will sit down and listen to what that pastor is preaching, whether he's talking about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of the world. There's only one reason to go to church, to look for the kingdom of God. Many churches have departments for business people. They have special prayer meeting days to pray for people's businesses and all. Oh, trash. Would you, would you find in the Bible where Jesus called business people together to pray for them? Look at me well. My church is not for business people. You want to make business, make it outside. My church is for salvation for those who are going to the kingdom of God. If you are looking to make business and to make money, don't come here. Don't come here. If you are only 10 people and we all enter heaven, that's 100% for me. If you are 10,000 people here and nobody enters heaven, that's a failure. I will not make money on the suffering of Christ. I cannot have the blood of thousands of people on my shoulders when I die. And in the same Jeremiah chapter 5, how God started with them is because he was looking for somebody that he could not get. God was thinking of destroying the whole Jerusalem because he could not get that person that he was looking for. If he had got that one person, he would spare them. The same thing with the house of God, the church of God. Will, will we allow Jesus to come, God to come and destroy this, the, 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 the whole thing we know as the church, the body of Christ, because he could not get one person? See what he says in verse 1 of Jeremiah chapter 5. He said, run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. Look and take note. Search her squares to see if you can find a man. One who does justice and seeks the truth. That's what he's looking for. A man. See if you can find a man, one who does justice and seeks the truth, that I may pardon her. Pardon who? Jerusalem. In other words, if we, recon if we, if we reconcile that to what is happening now, 
God is looking for one honest man that will stand in the gap for the church so that he can pardon the church so that he would he would not destroy in those days he could not find that's why Jesus had to come to save mankind and Jesus is not going to come again to die for us he's already done that what God is looking for now is one person or two persons or three who are honest enough to stand up against all the evils that are in the house of God, to rebuild the house of God, to seek that ancient part. We are the good ways and to work in it. you make up your mind to change so that you may be that one person that God is looking for. Not that he may not destroy the church. Do you know? Read your Bible, you will find that there were many places that the apostles went to and won souls for Christ. They went to Egypt, they went to most part of India, they went to different places, they set up churches there. But years after, those churches collapsed. The Muslims took over. The Buddhists took over. Even in Britain that we are, that we are years ago, the whole of Europe, Christianity. But now, it is Satanism. God is saying in Jeremiah chapter 4, Verse 1, if you return, O Israel, says the Lord, written in our own context, it will read, if you return, O body of Christ, if you return, you who call yourself Christians, to me you should return. Not to the societal Christian confederation, no. If you return, to me you should return. If you remove your abomination from my presence and do not waver. And if you swear as the Lord lives, in truth, in justice, and in uprightness, the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. If you return to me, are you saved? You believe in faith and not in hypocrisy. He will restore the glory of his house. Think about that. Mm -hmm.